Hi, today we're gonna to be talking about VO2 max, what it actually is, why it's so important, and how you can actually measure it at home. So we've all heard of VO2 max and how having a higher one is linked to having better athletic performance, but what exactly is it? So V stands for volume, O2 for oxygen, and max obviously stands for maximum, but there's a lot more to it than that. So VO2 max is the measure of how much oxygen your body can utilize while sustaining a maximum effort. So this is given to you in a number from about 25 to 90, which we'll go into later. And it basically describes the efficiency of how well oxygen is transported to your muscles. So this is technically milliliters of oxygen per kilogram of your body weight per minute. And this is the most common measurement for cardiorespiratory fitness. So now we know that the higher VO2 result you get, the better your body is at utilizing oxygen for your muscles. But what are the average results? So a typical result for your average 30 year old man with average fitness is gonna be from about 40 to 50. And the average for a 30 year old female is between 30 and 35. But then if you're on the really unfit of the spectrum, it can go all the way down to 25. And then the other end of the spectrum is if you're super fit, like an elite athlete, it can go all the way up to 65 plus. So to put that into perspective, Greg LeMond, the four times Tour de France winner, has got a VO2 max of over 92. And just an interesting fact, your VO2 max isn't directly linked to your lung capacity. So if you've got really big lungs, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to have a really good VO2 max. Sadly, the older we get, the harder it is to maintain a high VO2 max. And the genetics you're born with make quite a big difference too, but luckily there's quite a lot most of us can do to improve our VO2 max. You can increase your VO2 max by doing more aerobic activities like cycling and running, and this is going to increase your performance, especially with endurance activities. Having a really good VO2 max isn't just good for athletes, it's actually a really good indicator of your general health, and usually just makes you feel more energized, fit, awake, and healthier. So we know what VO2 max is now, and we know that doing more aerobic activity is gonna give us a better result. It's also gonna make us fitter, improve our performance, as well as just feeling better. But how do we measure it? So having your VO2 max tested used to be a pretty hard thing to come by as you needed something called a gas analyzer that basically is only found in a sports lab. Now, not all of us have access to one of them every day, but luckily for us now these days, some specific sport smartwatches allow you to take a reading from your wrist. So this is a great and accessible way to check your VO2 max, and it's still within 95% accuracy. So here I have the Polar Vantage V2, and it has an inbuilt fitness test that tests out your VO2 max. And the amazing thing about this particular test is that it doesn't require you to actually do any exercise. It actually wants you to relax and zen out as much as you can whilst it takes your reading. So what it's going to do, it's actually going to take your resting heart rate, your heart rate variability, as well as all the other data fields that you put into the watch itself. And then with your recent activities that you've tracked with the watch, it can measure your VO2 max. To get the best result, it's best to have sat down for five minutes before and not to have just eaten, as this can still change your heart rate. But I've been sat down and relaxed here for plenty of time now, so it's ready to take the test. And there it is, a metric that was almost too hard to get before that is now almost too easy. What's your VO2 max and your favorite way to train to get it higher? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.